All right, so I didn't really want to make too many videos about Vercel ship. Um, most of the stuff I don't care about. Like, I really don't care that Vercel is providing some upsell storage uh, security. I mean, I feel like that's more for like enterprise, any like VPCs or whatever. Um, collaborate, not really interested in. Like, I, I don't have needs for a CMS editor. But the thing I do care about is the app router. Now, if I look at this announcement, it looks like the app router is now stable, which is cool. And I wanted to kind of talk about this channel and my content and when I when do I actually plan to switch over to the new stable app router. And more specifically, I want to talk about bleeding edge technology and why my perspective is a little bit different from I think other people. A lot of people you'll watch on YouTube, they will kind of hype up new stuff and like try to get you to use it. Um, me personally, I like to take things slow. I like to let other people stumble and trip on this new approach or this new way to do things because I don't want to have to sit here and waste time debugging issues or getting caught up in issues, not being able to find any blog posts that explain how to use the app router. So in terms of my content, I do plan to switch over to the new app router, but I do have a lot of applications already using the pages directory. I have this whole icon generator AI.com site. This is using the pages directory. And I'm not just going to go and refactor it all to use the app router. Like it doesn't make sense for me to do that. Unless there's like a super, super clear benefit for me doing that. But for right now, this is just another paradigm shift, which probably doesn't provide my users that much improvement over what I'm doing right now. So I probably wouldn't do it. I also have my newsletter. This is using uh, Next.js pages directory. And a lot of the stuff I teach on this YouTube channel use the T3 stack. So until the create T3 stack um, adds in default support for the app directory and like they have it all figured out with TRBC and there's nothing that's too like weird using it that way, that's when I might actually start moving over to the app router. So one thing I do also want to talk about is like the server actions that Nex is releasing. This is alpha. So again, I'm never going to use this until it reaches stable, but it's an interesting idea. Basically in your server to render components, you can add a function called use server that basically your code can invoke and everything inside this code will be ran in the back end. So I guess Next is smart enough to basically take this function, abstract it away, make it so it only runs on the back end, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't know how cool this is actually going to be or if this is just going to be another way to write really unmaintainable code. I would say if you're going to be using this approach, you should probably have like one layer of abstraction away so that your server, uh, use server functions or whatever it's called, I guess it's called server actions. I would make sure that your server action doesn't have hard coded logic like SQL queries or doesn't know about Prisma. Even this, this KV increment, this is dangerous in my opinion, because now you're like coupling your backend logic directly to whatever, right? So I think one layer of abstraction so that when you call this, the code inside of this thing is just like a calling another function. But anyway, I won't get too into that because this video is mainly talking about bleeding edge technology. I do like a lot of the things that Vercel is trying to do and how like, you know, we're trying to innovate on stuff. But the honest truth is when you get hired at a company, there is a very high chance you will never be on bleeding edge. There is tons of legacy systems that are exist right now that you'll have to help add features to and maintain. For example, where I work, I'm still using um, a single page application. We have Express for our backend and that's fine. Like one saying that I think is really good to understand is if your users don't care about it, then you probably shouldn't care about it either. So what do I mean by that? So basically like if switching over to a new technology has a clear winning benefit to your users. For example, like let's say their user experience is much better. Their, their pages load a lot better. You can ship features a lot faster. You can fix bugs faster. Your code is more maintainable. If any of those things I just said apply to the new technology that was released, then that's when you should probably consider switching over to it. But then you also have to look at the trade-offs of like, how much work is it going to be to switch over to this new technology? How much time is it going to be and how much is it actually going to improve anything for the users, right? So these are the things that I think as you become more experienced, you actually think about more. Um, I think people who are new into the industry, they see this, these new features, they get hyped up on it. They want to use it. They start downloading it and using it. 
And then they start running into tons and tons of different like edge cases. Like I think there's edge cases where certain things don't work on the app router. Like if you go to the NPM repository right now and just start pulling in packages, some of them will not work with the app router from what I understand, right? Because in order for them to work, they have to add like a use client string inside of their functions, which is kind of weird, but I haven't really done too much research into it. So just keep that in mind. Um, always fact check everything I say, cause I don't <laughs> research hard. Uh, I wanted to also show something else that I kind of liked. So I was also scrolling through Twitter and like, I already had these thoughts about like switching over to new technology. And like when I saw the server action stuff, like I had some thoughts in my head as well, but there's always people out there who are going to be smarter than you, who are going to think harder about these paradigm shifts and can point out flaws. And this is one of them that I think is kind of interesting. Um, this is so Tom Sherman, he basically says, I think this will be a common one. Doesn't seem so obvious. Fetch some data using a secret. That is fine. Nothing leaks recommended RSC pattern. But he's saying add a server action. You just closed over the secret in attempt to save hitting your database secrets again and leaked it. So he's basically saying, if you do some type of code like this on accident, where you have a form that calls this action, and this action is actually referencing some secret things that were declared in this, this area right here. He's saying that you actually started leaking all your secrets. Okay. I didn't, I, I would have to actually check this code out and run it locally to understand what's going on, because I don't think I fully understand what he's talking about, honestly, because I haven't even used like server render components yet. But if this is true, this kind of just highlights the reason why I don't like living on bleeding edge. I like letting all these other people uh, what is, what does Theo say? Fall on the sword so that I can walk past all the failures that they basically did. So, so I'm kind of slow to adopt some of this stuff. And for my YouTube channel, I mean, like you guys might be disappointed that I'm not switching over to the app directory, like right now. Um, but again, my focus is like shipping stuff, like shipping real products, to features. And a lot of the time, the tech that you choose doesn't really matter too much. What matters more is, it, are you actually building a proper maintainable system? Can you add features to it? Are you getting proper analytics for your users? Are you getting user feedback? Are you following some type of agile mindset to really improve your processes and stuff? So that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, hopefully you guys learned one or two new things from watching this video. I know it was about, I know I kind of ranted a lot on this, but uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. So if you want to find a place to hang out with some other developers, I just want to point out, I have a discord channel that you can join in the description below where you can just, you know, Come in, ask for help if you want. Sometimes we'll help you. Sometimes we're busy, we won't help you. But I'm trying to build a nice open community to help other developers and just be a cool place to hang out. So be sure to check it out. Other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.